this video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting year from the good folks from Bendai Japan. So why don't we get started with the 160 of scale perfect grade RX-0 Unicorn Gundam. And without further ado, let's get to it. Yo, welcome back my dudes and dudettes, another unique build from yours truly, Utako Builder. And if this is your very first time onto this YouTube channel, welcome! Now before we get into this build, I want to wish everyone onto this YouTube channel a happy and prosperous new year. 2021 had its challenges, but 2022 is going to bring even more exciting challenges for this channel. And why don't we get started on my very, my very first perfect grade, the Unicorn Gundam. Now, I know there's a handful of you dudes and dudettes asking yourself, Utako Builder, why in the Shar Osnapal are you building another Unicorn Gundam on your channel? Don't you have enough already? And the truth of the matter is, you're right, but this particular unicorn is really special for me. Now before we get into that, let's talk about the Unicorn Gundam Full Cycle Frame Prototype Mobile Suit Box Art. And this box art is fantastic. The reflective foils for the red cycle frame and then the golden V fin up top is a nice little added bonus to really tell you I want to buy this. And that's the one thing I did back in January 1st of 2015. And man oh man, when the pre-orders were available to get this bad boy, I immediately bought it because I was already captivated by its unique articulation. The red psycho frame really screamed to me because my favorite colors are red and white. But most importantly, this guy is packed to the brim with tons and tons of weapon accessories. You get the hyper mega bazooka, you get the beam rifle, an extra cartridge for the beam rifle, two beam savers, a shield, and two Gatling guns. My god, this thing is ready for war. But probably the wonderful thing I like this mostly, it actually comes with two little Benadryl League figurines. But the selling point for this mobile suit was transforming it from its stoic unicorn mode into destroy mode. So that way it can look very looking intimidating. But for me, when I saw this i love the unicorn mode so much because this is absolutely clean it's elegant it's pure looking and then when you open up all those exposed areas you're like almost unleashing the demon out into space and i like the transition between those two so Enough about that, let's take a look what's inside the box. And as always, you are not being greeted with the instruction manual. As you can see here, it's buried ever so deeply into this pile of runners, finally giving you the Unicorn Gundam instruction manual. Giving you a nice hefty feel to it, telling you that this mobile suit is no joke when it comes to constructing it. As to the first page, you get a nice tight shot of the Unicorn Gundam looking absolutely so beautiful, soaring through the skies, being free as a bird, while well, the next page is giving you the hard breakdown of the inner frame. A nice side to side comparison showing the mobile suit when it's fully transformed and then when it's not, a handful of screenshots from the actual anime and then the next page gets really interesting as for the second and third page gives a nice description how to apply the sticker decals onto the surface on what tools you need to use what snippers you're going to use as well as a handful of tools if you happen to have the led light system and boy oh boy this thing is massive when it comes to the led light system because this is also another second selling point of this mobile suit this was the very first mobile suit that actually had a fully designed fully customized led wiring system to illuminate the whole entire cycle frame so if you actually have a couple of bucks and you want to spend some money on the actual LED light system, I would say do it because it's definitely the biggest selling point for this mobile suit, hands down. Next few pages give you a nice glimpse of the weapon accessories, a nice shot of the action base when it's fully assembled, and a brief diagram of how to transform the Unicorn Gundam into the destroy mode, which looks pretty complicated at first, but when you follow the instructions to the T, it shouldn't be a problem at all. In fact, it's actually very relaxing and quite fun when you're doing it this form. But hey, if the destroy mode isn't your thing, then the Unicorn mode will be just fine. Next page gives you more tight shots of the legs, more exposing areas for the cycle frame, a nice brief story of the man who was behind the developing process of the Unicorn Gundam, Cardius Fist, a shot of Benadryl link at the very bottom and a beautiful spread of a color guide to your heart's content to do some custom painting as well as a nice little long color chart to paint Benajer links as well as a very simplistic and quite simple color guide to color the whole unicorn Gundam. As you can see here there's not much crazy sticker decals to put onto this big behemoth but it's just enough to make it look really cool and look authentic in my opinion but if those sticker decals aren't your thing get yourself some water slide decals. Now let's talk about the runners. First runners up you're going to get a handful of flat blue pieces that are going to be primarily for the feet and the back unit followed by a whole slew of inner frame pieces that are going to be for the forearm shoulder plates as well as the main legs for this particular mobile suit followed by some nice sea blue pieces slash marine blue pieces for the actual weapon accessories ammo compartments and injected molded hands that are fully articulated when they're fully cut out make sure you have a good pair of good sharp snippers to get those guys out to make them look really good followed by two beam savers a handful of runners for the actual hyper mega bazooka to do some custom painting followed by a hefty amount of white runners that have a great deal of surface detail that definitely screams 
just panel lined me, followed by a very basic and very bland action base that has a very hollowed out mystery area that is actually primarily there for the power supply when you buy the LED light system sold separately. And last and finally, let's talk about the cycle frame. Now this cycle frame just screams delicious candy goodness because there are a great deal of surface detail. It's not too uncomforting, not too big, not too small, but just the right kind of sweet spot where things can work very well together when they're actually in tight closed areas. And I like that little attention to detail, really cool. Followed by the sticker decals, if you like it or not, that's what it is, they're work with the wall. Followed by the three unique colored green runners, the eyes, the visor, as well as the camera module, a handful of pink runners for the shield, tons of clear runners that are gonna be for the weapon accessories, as well as the scope for the weapon accessories accessories, the actual shield for the actual mobile suit, more unique sticker decals, but these particular are foil sticker decals that go inside the cycle frame, so that way the light can refract and bounce off of the cycle frame to really illuminate the way how it's designed to do it. So that wraps up Unicorn Gundam as a whole. Is it difficult? Is it exciting? Well, I guess we're going to find out right now, five years later. So as always, before we get started building this model kit, I want to take a step back and evaluate which area I want to tackle first. So it would make sense to tackle the weapon accessories first because they are not super complex and not too difficult at all to construct. And at the same time, they will take less than the time to actually paint and construct in less than a week versus the actual whole entire mobile suit, which will take literally a whole entire month.
All right, my dudes and do that's now we finally get into the meat and potatoes of this mobile suit and that's actually installing LED lights. Now, when I originally had the Unicorn Gundam, it actually had a really good LED light system where it completely illuminated the whole cockpit area. But this time around, I want to dilute it to the point where you can actually see all the little detail and hard work that goes into painting these little figurines. So I'm going to be blocking that area with some flat black and then hit it with some nice metallic paint to give it more emphasis onto that psycho frame and then put in a little Pico LED light to illuminate the pilot. As for the little psycho frame area, I'm going to add a little Pico LED light onto those ones that go into the shoulder blade and as for these little shoulder blades in the front i'm just going to drill in small little holes into these little areas because it gives a nice little dynamic look it's not really necessary to add this additional detail but for me i want to try something a little different something a little bit bold and drastically different from everything from time to time that i've seen the unicorn gun being built by other builders Alright, now both Pico LED lights and Mega LED lights are installed into the torso area, everything should illuminate the way how it's designed to be. Now the most challenging part is going to be the eyes. Now each eye itself is going to be independently plugged in with its own LED light system. Now the way how it's done in the past, we put in this reflective foil sticker in there and shine in a bright LED light to illuminate. So I'm going to take that sticker foil out put in two Pico LED lights in each individual eye, and then construct it after that. This is actually gonna illuminate to a point where it looks very accurate, and at the same time, get a nice dynamic flare to make it look really cool. Right, now that the visor is fully installed, I need to install the second Pico LED light on the edge to illuminate the whole entire visor. But before I do that, I need to talk about the actual camera module. Since it has a unique mechanism that slides forward and back, I need to make sure that there's enough breathing room where I can actually funnel enough electrical wiring to the actual clear plastic and down to the lower base of the head. So I'm gonna use a Dremel to hollow out a nice little groove section so that way it has enough breathing room for the electrical wire to go in there. So that way when I transform into unicorn mode and into destroy mode, it shouldn't have any problems down the road.
Okay, so now all the lights check out okay for the head. It's now time to do a test for this three switch system. Now the three switch system is pretty much designed in a way where I wanna have two separate LED lights transform in two different phases. So phase one is going to illuminate the visor sections on the shoulders as well as areas around the thighs and the legs, while the other switch will turn on the cycle frame light so that way you get a two tone system. This is kind of like my cheap way of actually not actually having the LED light system that you would buy from Bendai and kind of like doing my own little thing. Once I get everything initially planned out, everything should work the way it's supposed to. Now, the biggest challenge when everything is put into there is making sure all the electrical wire is put where it needs to go. But before I do that, I wanna get started on painting these particular blue runners. I'm gonna keep everything in the actual same color, but slightly make them a little bit more darker blue, but putting more emphasis in there to make it look really good. But the biggest challenge is, is actually putting all the LED lights inside the backpack unit. So since there's a great deal of hollow out space in there, I can actually do some custom wiring to make the backpack illuminate the way how it looks on the anime.
comes the most challenging part and that is installing three mega LED lights into the leg area. So we have one around the knee section, one around the ankle, and one around the mid thigh. But since this thing is actually engineered to actually put in electrical wiring, it shouldn't be a problem at all. But the biggest challenge is actually going to be installing the actual green LED light in specific key areas. Alright, I reached the part of this model kit that I'm actually super excited to get started on, and that is actually installing fiber optic lighting inside these little square sections. Now, these square sections don't really have a purpose on the Molson besides just adding some more design flair, but I want to try something really different. So, what I'm going to end up doing is using Evans Design's fiber optic tubing at the exact same measurements as they are in this particular square area, and then, for specific key areas, I'm going to give a nice little smush with my wire cutters, so that way I can actually have like a perfect nice little snipe, like tight fit in there, and then other areas that don't have a nice little tight fit i'm actually going at a 40 degree angle so that way i give a nice little clean cut in there so that way it can fit nice and snug since there's a great deal of surface ripple due to it being smushed it's actually going to create a nice little light refracted effect so less twinkling more dynamic lighting
right, my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this build. And man, oh man, it was so refreshing to come back to building this kit after five years. The memories of taking it out of the box and trying to figure out do I use an X-Acto blade or a good pair of cheap snippers that I would buy from a hardware store to cut out the runners? What kind of sandpaper do I need? How do I take the sticker decals out without getting fingerprints stuck underneath there? I mean, the list goes on. But the wonderful feature of this mobile suit was actually buying the LED light system and seeing this guy light up like a Christmas tree. It was absolutely beautiful. Now, there is a lot of concerning parts with this particular mobile suit. The inner frame itself is nothing really special to really brag about. It's pretty much designed to house the LED light system. There are some areas that look really cool, but there are some areas that look kind of meh. So be mindful of that. Another thing that's actually very important is the difficulty level. And I would strongly, strongly advise you not to build this model kit. Start with the OG Gundam RX-78, maybe a Freedom Gundam, or even the classic Zeta Gundam. Those are excellent entry levels of building your very first perfect grade, not the Unicorn Gundam. There is a such a strong complexity to this mobile suit that can actually make even an experienced builder frustrated. But everyone's different. For me, I wanted a challenge. After I got comfortable building one master grid over another, I really wanted to really take a delve into the world of building my very first perfect grid. Now, I know there is a very important question you guys are asking yourself. Does it make sense to actually do a custom LED setup versus buying the Bendai one? And here's the thing. Both implications cost roughly the same, but if you want less of a headache, you want everything to go into where it needs to go, no customizations required, go with the Bendai route. I imagine that they're quite affordable right now. Putting custom LED lights in there is a passion project. You want to take what you've learned in the last several years and apply everything you learned of painting and weathering and LED installation. And then once you got good at LED installation, you want to evolve it to the next step. That is my passion. That is my drive of being a Gunpla builder. And I remember that feeling of buying this model kit and taking it out of the box and being overwhelmed, but excited and then afraid, but overwhelmed with such a great deal of joy because I finally, I finally came back to something that I'm actually excited to build once again. Giving it up so many years ago and coming back to it as an adult, it just felt right and I am so happy I came back to revisit this old friend. Truly I am. Now, another thing you guys are probably asking yourself, are you going to consider building the other variants that are in the marketplace? And the answer to that is, I don't know. Sure, the Banshee might have a great deal of weapon accessories. Sure, there's another Unicorn Gundam with the advanced weapon pack of all the armaments in the later film. You got the Phoenix with its metallic gold surface. And then down the road, you have another perfect raid that has everything all three of these mobile suits have. But no originality. It wouldn't make sense for me to build those particular mobile suits because they have the exact same architecture, they have the exact same frame. There's no challenge. And I do not want to be that builder on YouTube where I am just going to go blindly buying every single variant on this channel and encourage people to waste their money. You need to set yourself aside and build what catches your eye. That's why there exists multiple color variations of the Unicorn Gundam. Maybe someone doesn't like the red, others might like the blue and green. There is a color scheme for everyone, and the red Psycho Frame Gundam? Hmm. That is the one for me, my dudes and dudettes. Truly it is. But. That's enough about me being very philosophical. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for the likes, comments, and subscribes. If you guys do me a big favor, give this video a thumbs up. It will help me out tremendously. And I will see you dudes and dudettes on the next build.